Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a preservation detail on this 2017 Holden Commodore SSU. So let's start with a little about this car and job and then we'll get straight into the detail. This car was brought new by the owner five years ago, has very low case, has always been garaged and apart from a few blacked out vinyl accents and custom pipes, it's all original and easily one of the best examples of this car around. Growing up, Holden was an iconic Aussie car brand. My father had an old HK Holden, my brother had a HJ Monaro, and I can't tell you how many P-Plater beat up Commodores my friends and I cruised the streets in, those are fond memories I'll always have. They were big, solid cars, affordable, cheap to fix, and best of all, they were made right here in Australia. You can put it down to bureaucrats, increasing government regulations, unions, or simply just badly run companies. But the Aussie made muscle car is now just a thing of the past. Now the cool thing about this job is that the owner himself was handed down a beautiful example of an old HJ Premier from his father that he absolutely cherishes. And his intent is to keep that tradition going and pass this amazing example of a Holden SS VFU down to his son. I guess that's why this is a preservation detail in the truest sense. He wants to pass this history of a once proud car making nation and let his kids know and experience a time in our past where we too put combustion engines into metal chassis in this sunburnt country. We'll have a better look at the paint's condition once the car is washed and decontaminated but it's safe to say there's quite a few paint defects and a lack of clarity in the finish that I'm sure can be greatly improved. But beyond that, the main focus here will be preserving the original paint, meaning that I'm going to have to find that perfect balance of removing as many of the existing defects as I can, while removing as little clear coat as possible to get there. So, let's get to it. The first area to be treated were the wheels. Now as you see later on, I'm going to polish the wheel faces to remove quite a significant amount of wash and juice swells and then add a ceramic coating to seal the finish. But firstly, they need a good thorough clean. I started with a chemical pre-treatment and pressure rinse to remove as much dirt as possible in a safe touchless manner. This was followed up by a physical clean using various wool brushes to deep clean the inner and outer wheel areas. Some of you guys may know I moved to a new shop location this year. One of the pros here is this amazing new wash bay that I absolutely love. It's huge space wise, self draining, has a top pressure hose boom arm and is really a car washing dream setup. But one of the issues here has been finding a suitable car jacking or hoisting solution. 
The graded metal flooring doesn't allow for car jacks or jack stands to be easily manoeuvred and positioned and outside of the wash bay is unleveled or high traffic areas that currently don't work. There is plans for a second paint correction and coating room in the future that will hopefully have a hoist, but in the meantime we've just gotten in a portable quick jack that I'm hoping will provide a solution in the wash bay to get the car up and the wheels off. It just arrived recently and there's been a few issues I won't get into here, but I'm hoping once I get time to sort it out it will be a great addition to the new setup. The second area to be treated was the engine bay. I started by disconnecting the battery and then using compressed air to move as much dust and dirt as possible. Loose dirt and particles create mud and grit when wet with water and chemicals. So the more you can remove prior to a physical clean always results in a safer cleaning outcome. The next step was a pre-sake chemical treatment using an all-purpose cleaner to start softening and lifting the engine bay grime. Once the chemical was allowed to dwell for a short period, I then used my Tornador air tool to start injecting compressed air mixed with a light all-purpose cleaner solution to blast the dirt and contamination off the engine bay components section by section. The great thing about the Tornador for engine bays is that it mostly uses compressed air and very little liquid to clean, yet it's so effective. You'll see that I used about 200ml of my APC solution in the Tornador reservoir bottle to clean the entire engine bay. And then I switched the reserve bottle to clean water and used about another 200ml of liquid to flush the chemical off and rinse the engine bay down. Just to put that into perspective, a standard garden hose will flow about 500ml of water in about 3 seconds, yet I use less than that in the Tornador to clean and rinse the whole engine bay. I've used this same method for years, it's safe, effective and extremely efficient. Now on older and badly neglected engine bays, you do need to further physically clean with brushes, but on this engine bay, this touchless clean was more than enough to get it amazingly clean. Once done, I then use compressed air to dry the engine bay, followed by quick towel dry to soak up any remaining water. The last and important step was turning the engine over and running it to operating temperature. This allows for trapped water to be ejected out and evaporated through the engine turning and heating up.
With the wheels and engine bay cleaned, I turn my attention to the exterior paint and trims. I started with a pre-treatment of an iron and traffic film remover to begin penetrating the surface contamination. It was allowed to dwell for 5 to 10 minutes, giving it time to react, and was then followed up with an alkaline pre soaked foam treatment, which was also allowed to dwell for a further 5 to 10 minutes before giving the entire vehicle a thorough and methodical pressure rinse down. I like the sound of the raindrops drumming on a first day summer day, yeah, like the scent of coffee brewing in the morning, you like the crack. With as much surface grime as possible removed in a safe touchless manner, the next step was using an acid-based detergent to physically hand wash the vehicle. PH iron removers, alkaline and acid detergents all have more unique abilities to tackle various forms of environmental contamination such as fallout, water mineral deposits, grease, baked on dirt and even existing waxes and sealants. The goal here is to strip the car back to bare paint and trims so I have a clean slate once I get to the paint correction process. Some intricate areas of the vehicle, such as accent trims, badges and grills, are simply difficult to thoroughly clean with a standard wash mitt. This is where a good and safe feathered brush, along with a detergent or APC, can access those finer areas, agitate them, loosen and remove the dirt and grime. Final inspection that visually and physically inspects the paint and trims is a vital process. I couldn't see or feel any remaining fallout or road particles on the paint, meaning that there was absolutely no need to further clay the vehicle or use further cleaning chemicals or processes. The water behaviour was flat and pooling, and the paint felt clean with a touch of grippiness or pointing to a clean bare finish which was fantastic. 
The last steps were giving the car a quick towel dry, followed by using compressed air to blow out the trapped water and then a final IPA wipe down of the entire vehicle to get it ready for the following correction and coating steps. With the paint clean, bare and dry, this is the time we can truly assess its condition. The first thing that jumps out to me is that strong layer of haze that almost hovers over the paint and creates a real dullness making the rich black paint look a little greyish in tone. Beneath that is an all encompassing spiderweb pattern of swirls that pretty much covers the entire paint surface. And beyond those finer swirls is a portion of more straight line, random, deeper, isolated scratches scattered around most panel sections, as well as some water etchings around the edges of all the glass. All in all, it's really not that bad, but for a five-year-old low mileage vehicle, it's not all that great. And I think I'll be able to make quite a significant improvement once I'm done. After taking some paint thickness readings, everything is really as it should be and looks very consistent with an original factory paint finish. The readings on the alloy bonnet with no primer are lower as normal compared to the slightly higher readings on the primed steel panels. So really, no warning signs and based on me taking a very gentle approach, I really don't see any issues moving forward, which is great. I decided to start with the wheels as the first area of correction and protection. Wheels are really a time consuming and awkward area of correction so I generally like to get them done sooner than later. After doing a couple of test sections I discovered that the paint on the wheels was very soft so they would require a less aggressive approach that was still able to produce a good cut and finish as they were pretty bad. What I settled on was using my Rippers Mini Air Polisher with their foam polishing pad and the last cut final polish that seemed to find the perfect balance of cut, finish, gloss and clarity. Each wheel face took about 45 minutes to correct to a high standard but I think they came out looking pretty amazing and I think it was well worth the effort. After completing all four wheels, it was then time to seal and protect the finish. For this I used CarPro's C-Quartz Deluxe with a foam applicator. The 
coating was firstly spread over the whole wheel and then I spent a good couple of minutes thoroughly and evenly working it all over the entire outer face. Once the coating had fully flashed and streaked, I then leveled down all the excess high spots with a couple of cloths and a good coating inspection light. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but I think they came out great and potentially better than you with such a deep and rich black finish. The next day the tyres were dressed and the wheels were covered to protect them and keep them clean as they continue to cure. Next up was coating the engine bay. But just before we get to that, I did give all the door jam areas a quick polish and clean to restore their finish. Door jam areas almost have no clear cut or if any in some cases applied, so you should never try and chase any significant scratch or defects. But a super light polish that removes next to no clear coat can clean off any staining and just restore a nice glossy finish that really makes them pop and just adds to the overall presentation of something like an engine bay. In preparation for the coating, I firstly gave the entire engine bay a good thorough IPA wipe down to remove any oils or detergent residue. Then section by section, the whole engine bay was given a coat of Carpro Deluxe including the plastics, metals, rubbers, and paint. I'll have finished shots of the engine bay that you'll see at the end, but I think it came out looking amazing and was super happy with the end result. I should also mention that not all the footage is in chronological order. I just made a decision here to show some areas like the wheels, engine bay and even the rear cargo area at different stages in sequence. Typically I do all the decontamination followed by all the correction and then all the coatings as a general process. Now after coating the wheels and engine bay, I still had about half a bottle of Seacourts Deluxe, so I decided to use it to also ceramic coat the rear cargo area. 
Just like all the other trims, I started with an IPA wipe down and then section by section worked the coating all over the cargo plastic lining. Name truth, ceramic coating the cargo area wasn't part of this detail, nor was the engine bay coating or polishing and coating all the door jams. These are all things I took it upon myself to do at my own judgement, time and expense, because I could see a value in doing them. The other motivating factor was that I wanted to film and show how on this particular car I would address these areas if it was my own car, and I hope this additional information is helpful to you guys. So finally onto the paint correction stage. Now as many of you guys may know, my goal is always to work in the least aggressive manner. In other words, to always remove as little clear coat as possible to achieve the desired result. The only way to discover what's going to get me there on each different paint type and its specific defects is to do some testing. So starting with the light abrasive and the light pad in the form of the Last Cup Final Polish and Shine Mate Foam Polishing Pad, I did my first test section doing 3-4 to four passes with a mid to high machine speed and moderate pressure in an area about 6-8 to eight times the size of my pad. I'm using masking tape to help more clearly show the results and performing an IPA wipe down to remove any polishing oils. Now as we have a look at the results, I can immediately see that almost all the existing defects have been removed which is very surprising. But I can also see that the finish has a decent amount of compounding or polishing haze left behind. So what does this tell me? Firstly, the only way so many defects would have been removed with such a light polishing combination indicates this is a soft paint. And secondly, for such a good finishing combination to leave so much obvious haze behind indicates this is quite a sensitive soft paint that will need a delicate touch. For a second test section, I stuck with the same polish but this time used it with an even finer finishing foam pad to hopefully finish with less haze and better clarity. I used a little less polish on the pad and slowed my machine speed down a touch to help increase the finishing quality but otherwise my technique was quite similar. Now looking at the results, unfortunately the finish was really no better here having similar amounts of haze, but also obvious was the fact that the defect removal ability was decreased, unable to remove as many defects as the previous section. At this stage, it was pretty clear that I needed a polish that's a little more tuned to finishing well on soft paint types, but with a pad that can still give me enough cut to deal with the existing defects. For a third test section, I used NV Finesse Polish with the previous Shinemate foam pad and my technique was identical to the first test section. Looking at the results, I hope you guys can see that all the original haze is gone and no polishing haze has been left in the finish. In fact, the gloss and clarity was quite amazing. Furthermore, at least 95% of the defects have been removed which more than meets my objective for that high-end finish. I always like to double check my combination so I tried another test section on another panel and the results were identical which was great to see. Now the rear cargo cover is more of a recent aftermarket accessory purchase that will most likely have a different paint type. So I did a little testing there and what I found was that it was a harder paint type. So in the end I stepped up to a medium compound and intermediate foam pad in the form of Shoal S20 Black on the Shine Mate Blue One Step Foam Pad that seemed to work quite well on that diverse paint type. With all that sorted out, I proceeded to correct the entire bonnet. As a general method, I like to start with my smaller pads and polishes to address the more intricate, time-consuming body lines, edges and trims. 
Smaller machines and pads allow you to achieve superior and safer results around these delicate areas. But the trade-off is that it's extremely time-consuming and sometimes tedious work that requires a lot of patience. You'll also see that I used my largest 6 inch machine and pads for the bigger flatter areas of the vehicle. I've done quite a few of these utes and they have a lot of polishing real estate to cover and more flatter areas than your typical car. So a 6 inch machine here is a great choice to move a little quicker once the more intricate areas have been addressed. We'll obviously have a look at the whole vehicle at the end, but I was super happy with how the bonnet came out. It's in no way perfect or 100% defect free, but considering how gentle this paint correction stage will be in retaining almost all of the original clear coat, I think it was a great win with at least 95% defect removal and just fantastic gloss and clarity levels. The glass was another area that required a little attention to remove some minor water etchings and restore its original reflective quality and clarity. Although you can, you don't need to use any specific glass polish to correct glass panels. In some cases, certain glass polishes do leave certain waxes or sealants behind that can be grey, but in this case I'm intending on ceramic coating the glass so I don't want to use anything but a pure polishing abrasive that won't leave any interfering polymers behind that may cause bonding issues with the coating. So in essence the glass was corrected almost identically to the paint panels using the same combinations of machines to restore its finish. Now once I got to the rear cargo cover, this turned out to be a little more work than I anticipated, as once I removed the finer swirls, a few larger, longer scratches that looked like something had been dragged over the panel could be seen more clearly in the finish. 
So I ended up going over these isolated scratches a few more times to get them down to a reasonable condition. In truth, it's a pretty decent hard cover as I've done a lot of them and seen a lot worse. But the paint could be a little better as the metallic flakes seem a little inconsistent in areas as does the orange peel levels and the straight or flat finish of the panel that's a little dimpled in certain areas. It's not original to the car and although I could have spent more time on it, it's just a judgement call I had to make to keep moving forward and not get sidetracked or lose focus on the rest of the vehicle that still needed a lot of work. In the end, the whole paint correction process went fairly slowly but thankfully smoothly. What's the old saying? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, I think that was true to this detail. I gave the car the time it needed, tried not to rush the process and I think it paid off. All the head and tail lights, piano black plastics and door jams were also corrected and the vehicle was given another IPA wipe down prior to the coating protection stages. Now you guys already saw the coating and protection process for the wheels, engine bay and cargo area, so let's continue that with the glass. For this I use CarPro Flyby 4. I've got a dedicated video on the new version 4 of Flyby if you want to check out its application and performance, but I think it's an amazing glass coating in how it applies quite easily, further enhances the glass and of course behaves in the wet. So Flyby was used to coat all the exterior glass, with two coats applied to the front windscreen and a single layer to the side and rear glass. The final step in this whole detail was protecting the exterior paint and trims. For this I used CarPro's Sequartz Professional Ceramic Coating. I believe the latest version was released just over a year ago and I can say without a doubt it's the best Sequartz Pro formula to date.
The easiest way to describe it in terms of application, looks and performance is as a pro-grade or supercharged version of CarPro's Sequart SICK consumer-based coating. Its super sleek adds loads of reflective gloss and a great darkening saturation effect to really take the paint to the next level. Beyond that, its hydrophobic performance is truly impressive based on some prior applications and testing I've done. And I've seen one layer of this new version last twice as long as two layers of the previous version, so I've got a lot of confidence that it will be a fantastic long-term coating. So after some testing to discover its optimal flash and wipe off times on that particular day, I proceeded to ceramic coat all the paint, plastic and rubber trims. So let's wrap up this video. This was without a doubt one of the longest and time consuming details I've done this year. From the engine bay, to the wheels, to the door jams, glass, trims and paint, almost no area was left untouched. I also gave the interior a quick clean and once over just as a complimentary tidy up. With filming the whole job, it was a good 100 hours of work but taking filming out of the equation, it was probably about 40 to 50 hours of actual detailing work on this amazing Holden SSU. The hard thing about trying to preserve as much original clear coat as possible is that I know if I was more aggressive with the initial cutting back of the paint, the results could have been even better. But here's the thing. This car in its paint will 100% get swelled, scratched, water spotted and oxidized again, at least to some extent. It's hard to measure how much clear coat you're removing unless you're being really aggressive because paint is applied very inconsistently as far as thickness goes. But I'd be extremely surprised if I removed more than a fraction of a micron of paint during this process. Meaning that if it's polished in a similar manner, you could polish this car dozens if not hundreds of times over and never encounter issues of burning through the clear coat. Yet cut it back too aggressively and you could burn through the clear in one go. In other words guys, it's not about how often you polish a car, it's all about how aggressive you are and when you can find that perfect balance of greatly improving the finish without sacrificing too much paint, that for me is being a responsible and respectful detailer. This car will never exist again, and my hope is that it will be around in its original state for many more generations to come and enjoy it. I think I'll leave it there guys, and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad, in which I'll have a link to in the description box, or you can now hit the thanks button below the video, and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, what's your soul saying?